Hello and welcome to another Biology Bites podcast. Today we'll be discussing Chapter 8, Nucleic Acids, with Meg. Hi Meg. Hello. So what can you tell us about nucleic acids? Nucleic acids is another name for DNA, which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA contains the genetic code used to make proteins. Slight changes in the proteins makes it all different from one another. OK, tell us more. DNA is a double-stranded molecule made up of two chains of nucleotides, and each chain makes up a polynucleotide which makes the double helix shape that we all know as DNA. Right, I get that. But what is a nucleotide made up of? A nucleotide is made up of three parts. A phosphate group, a five-carbon sugar called deoxyribose, and an organic base. Which are adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Yes, but they are usually shortened to A, T, G, and C. Adenine and guanine are purine bases, which means that they have two rings in their structure. And thymine and cytosine are pyrimidine bases, as they only have one ring in their structure. The nucleotides are held together by strong covalent bonds between the phosphate groups and the deoxyribose sugar. Right, so how do they pair up? Well, adenine pairs with thymine and guanine pairs with cytosine. So A pairs with T and G pairs with C. This is called complementary base pairing and is due to the amount of rings that they have in their structure. They're joined together by hydrogen bonds which are the attraction between the slightly positive charge on a hydrogen atom and the slightly negative charge on another atom of another molecule. Yes. So is there anything else we need to know about the structure of DNA? Only that it is anti-parallel. This means as one chain runs one way, the chain on the opposite side runs the other way, causing the double helix shape. OK, so how is DNA replicated? Well, the replication of DNA is called semi-conservative replication, because each of the new DNA molecules is made up of one strand of the old DNA molecule and one new strand. Right, and this happens during interphase of the cell cycle. Yes, and it starts by the enzyme DNA helicase breaking the hydrogen bonds, making the double helix unzip and unwind. Right, and this is where the free nucleotides come in, isn't it? Yes, free nucleotides in the nucleus pair up with their complementary bases that are exposed. Then another enzyme called DNA polymerase links the free nucleotides to the strand by forming covalent bonds between the phosphates and the sugars. So now you have two identical strands of DNA made up of one old strand and one new one. Exactly. Right, that's all well and good, but what is DNA used for anyway? DNA is used to make proteins. Three bases, or a triplet of bases, codes for one amino acid. And the sequence of amino acids codes for a protein to be made on the ribosome. But what's a gene? A gene is a sequence of nucleotides that codes for one polypeptide, or a chain of amino acids. OK, so we've talked about nucleotides, complementary base pairing, DNA replication and the role of DNA. Is there anything that we've missed out on? Just one thing, RNA. OK. RNA, short for ribonucleic acid, another polynucleotide in a cell. Yes, they are made up of the sugar ribose rather than deoxyribose. They are mainly single-stranded, and instead of having the base thymine, it has the uracil. OK, but what is RNA used for? RNA is used in protein synthesis. An RNA strand is built up against a gene with a complementary base sequence. It then travels from the nucleus to the ribosome. And then what happens? The sequence of bases on the RNA molecule is used to determine the sequence of amino acids and therefore the protein that's being made. Well, thanks for that, Meg. No problem. Stay tuned for more podcasts coming soon, and good luck with the rest of your revision. Thanks for watching, and happy Easter.